I don't know how you're going to decide. What? They're all sitting here. What's the story behind the suitcase? Well, I don't know. It's like a little piece of tape they're trying to keep it open, and I don't think that's original. <laughs> no, that, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, oh, what's significant about this briefcase? It survived the plane crash. And, and on the 50th anniversary, I think I didn't mention it earlier, I had an old stage with me. And uh, my good buddy uh, Randy brought it up for me because it didn't make it home with Dad. And I, and I said that uh, before I performed, you probably don't even watch the show, but I remember. <laughs> I remember. Well, it was on stage with me. Uh, and I brought it home. And now we're bringing it back. Um, I think that's where it belongs. You know, it's, uh, a lot more people are going to sit here than in the closet in my house. And um, so anyway, this, this briefcase survived the plane. Uh, Dad's initial was on the front of it. Um, Mother used to tell a story about how, you know, whenever he'd come home, that he'd always take a little stick of money in here. And so it was kind of a game they played. Whenever he'd show up, he'd go right to the briefcase and right, right for this pocket here to see what he had done. You know. But also in here, um, you got that? You got that? This little notebook survived the plane crash. It was in, it was in his briefcase. It was songs that he was working with, handwritten songs. Um, there's also a page here in the back where it talks about, and he talks in the third person. His handwriting. Uh, big bopper to GAC in Chicago, Illinois, which was on January 23rd, 1959, which is where the tour started and where they met. Um, so, you know, there's a page in here with that, and that was, that was in the brief case also. So, they're going to display that here. Also, that's my father's first known notebook, which has a couple of songs in it. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff. You know. Could you read us one line? <laughs> One of the first ones? Whatever you want. Well, I mean, I have, well, I have one here also that was recorded. Oh, like that? She's got my glasses in the shirt. Are you sure? All the shirts Yeah. Are you a reader? I'm going to go with my to know. We got rhinestones. We're family. Yeah. That was a thought. Okay, okay, this is one. And, and, and I don't know how, I'll check a little bit there, so I'll put that. Um, it's called The Lost Son. And I'm guessing Dad was probably 12 or 14 years old when, when this was done. Um, one cold December morning, in a box all filled with rain, lay a young war weary soldier, and his body was filled with pain. By him stood a captain to see what he could do for the life of the soldier boy, but he knew it was no use. In his hand was his dog tag. To the captain he said, Please send this to my mother, or I'm an officer and be dead. And he turned to the captain in a voice so weak and frail, said, There's some things I want you to hear, a story to you I'll tell. My mother, she is uh, lonely. Her life has been so blue. For my father left her when I was only two. This was all he had time to say in his foxhole, bloody red. The soldier could tell no more. The soldier boy was dead. Now the captain, he was crying as he laid aside his gun. He'd seen this boy's dog tag. He knew it was his son. That was one of his first songs. Um, matter of fact, it was one about his hometown because he has them listed in here. Beaumont Blues and somebody... Saturday morning, it was funny. There are a couple of songs in here. Uh, it's a name written on the front that says J. Peterson Songs, and then the inside in Crayola. What are you feeling right now? Um, well, I feel emotional, but um, I'm, I'm just very, I feel very proud. You know, I'm, 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 I'm very emotional and passionate about my father. But I'm, but I'm just, I'm more proud. Uh, you know, there's, there's one thing he wanted to do was take care of his family. That was it. He wouldn't have been on that plane had he, had, had he been able to make the money in radio um, that he could make, you know, performing. Uh, he, he, would have, he would have never been here. Um, it, 
it was all about taking care of his family. And uh, I'll try to get to a story here that uh, my father was in the service, and, and they used to do the, the, uh, the soldiers' uniform for 50 cents, press them or whatnot, you know. Uh, well, my mother would do them for a quarter. And my mother told me to do them when I could have them. Never have to work again. That's when he went home, and within six weeks, he had talked the owner back then. He wasn't like a big conglomerate. So, uh, gentleman, uh, John Jack Hill, who owned the radio station, he told him what he wanted to do. He wanted people to know he was back in town, and he wanted to do this, what he called the Jacob Bond. And that was his way of letting, you know, I mean, it's his idea to do it, his concept. Uh, they thought he was crazy, he, you know, but, but, but Jack agreed to let him do it. And that's when my father set the world record for continuous broadcast. And that was his, his promise to my mother. Okay, you have well, one. it was fulfilled. I'm sorry. It was fulfilled. From, from that moment on, it was fulfilled. You know right? My turn? You have a, a receipt from your father's Last hotel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Well, you want to try to get me again? Now, there's a receipt here. The last place my father laid his head in Ironwood, Michigan. And what, what's so significant to me about it is it's in Dad's handwriting. I guess if I can remember, you can go in and you can come up here. Uh, $3.75. But it was, um, it was in Ironwood, Michigan, and it was February 1st, 1959. Um, some 30 years later, the Lord blessed me with a son. On that day, February 1st, uh, 1990. So, uh, very significant. Yeah. That's that. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Randy, where's my handkerchief when I need it? <laughs> uh, no, these are happy here. These are, um, there's just a lot of different things. There's, there's a song that, uh, I don't know if you have it. We said that. Here's, here's his official uh, promo photo back then, which now you do have one. Just a flat top haircut is working? Yeah, and, and I remember I had hair like that when I first came here. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, we have a kind of smidgy uh, display one of these. A gold record company, they, they put together a uh, gold record, and you only have it too. The one uh, was supposed to be Dad's picture, mm -hmm. his picture, and stuff. Where you get some of that? Okay. Well, the company that represented Dad represented me for a while. And they asked for a picture of J.P. Richardson. This record company was going to make 5,000 of them, numbers one through 5,000. We look so much alike. As I was 28 years old. And that's when my father passed. He was 20. And the promo picture I had, it looked so much like my father. And they asked for a picture. They sent him my picture. I get a call from this company. And they said, look, we'd like to send you some artwork uh, and get your approval. Because we'd like to do this, so and so and so and so. Well, they sent it to me, and I looked at it, and I said, well, it looks great. I said, the only problem is, I said, that's my picture, not my father's. And they were acting like they were waiting for my approval before they pressed it. Well, they had already pressed it by the <laughs> Yeah, that's why today, um, they're probably more flexible. Now they really will be, now that people know this. Because <laughs> it's something they'd asked me a few days afterwards. Uh, you know, they said, well, get back to you. And they cut back to me and said, you know, we have a little problem here. We've already, we've already pressed them. And could you kind of not say anything? <laughs> well, that's going to cost you a little more. But, uh, no, not, <laughs> not it. Uh, so anyway, there are 5,000 of these gold records. Uh, they're, they're February 3rd. They're the day music guy out that have my picture and not that. There's another one of these uh, tabloid magazines that talks about an airplane that lands every year somewhere around the world, and it names all the deceased uh, 
the stars when they get off the plane and go and you prompt to do a concert when you, when you do the tabloids. Well, they have my picture in them too. You know, yeah, not there. So I mean, that's how much. Yeah, we look. I tell people, you know, say people look at me and go, "Oh, you look so much like your dad." Now, my dad lived to be 52, and he probably looked like this. <laughs> that's what I used to look. Like. Yeah. Um, we have a telegram from Elvis Presley. This is a copy because I told you I don't trust him here. Uh, <laughs> but, but, a, but a telegram from Colonel Parker and condolence uh, and uh, PFC, Elvis Presley. Um, I, don't know, I guess I mean there's just plenty of things. There's some there's a lot of there's some local things here from the war funeral home that handled my father's uh, body after the fact, and then um, Dr. Smiley, who was the acting written and typed letters and notes and things of that sort that uh, here and uh, I have some dice as I was coming to that I want to bring and uh, have them display because they were my dad carried them with him uh, and they played craps on the bus and uh, Wayne told a story about it Tommy also uh, told a story and now we have photographs of service a couple of years ago of them actually doing it and I have two sets of dice that like, they were found in the Two sets of them, so we'd like to get one set here. Uh, you know, there's a display here. I'm kind of bring them home again, so to speak. Do you have a watch on display at the museum? 